Hello and welcome to the Ben Washington Baptist Church weekly online Bible study where we unlock the mysteries of God's holy word. This is where we encounter and experience the truth of God's word through the study of his word. We pray that something will be said that will encourage you in your journey with Christ. May God bless your reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. God bless you. And now, here's our lesson. Well, uh, greetings again, uh, Ben Washington family. We're, we're back for another midweek Bible study in our favorite place at our favorite time. Uh, and when is the best time to study God's word? When you're hungry, when you need it, uh, as often as you can get it. So we're excited that you are taking the time today uh, to participate in our midweek Bible study. We pray that uh, the lessons that you're learning in the Word of God is, is helping to produce the fruit in your life or a harvest. And we're praying that some of the questions that you may have wondered for quite some time are being answered. And we're hoping that you can find a common thread. And, and, and that thread that we're covering right now is the fact that God is a covenant God. He's a God who enters into agreement with, with you and he's a God who will keep his covenant or keep his promises to you. And so I'm excited today because today we're going to be studying about God's covenant with Moses. And when I say Moses, it's not just Moses, it's the nation of Israel. And again, you will find yourselves in that covenant agreement or arrangement and so there are things that we can learn. So let's open up with a word of prayer. Father God, we come this, this day. We thank you, Lord, for the day. We thank you for allowing us to be able to come and to share in your word with your people. We pray, God, that we will rightly divide your word. We pray, God, that we can um, learn the truths of your word, apply it to our lives, and help us to grow in our faith. We pray, Father God, that if there be any here, uh, who hungers and thirsts after righteousness, Lord, we pray that they may be fed. You said in your word that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So, Lord, we're praying that you will bring knowledge to our forefront, and we pray that we will grow in the knowledge and the understanding of your word, and that we will be wise enough to, to live by your word. This we pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you today. We're, uh, I want to give you some time uh, to get something to write with because I got a lot of scriptures to cover. I may not cover all these scriptures, but I want to give you an opportunity uh, in your individual devotion time. You can go back to it. So I want to, our primary text today is coming out of uh, Exodus chapter 19 uh, and Exodus chapter 20. But I also want you to be able to study Exodus chapter 24, verse 7 and 8. Uh, Exodus chapter 34, verse 10 through verse 27. Uh, Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 through 10, as well as verse 11 through 15. Acts chapter 7, verse 23 through through 43, and finally Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23 through 29. In Jewish history and in Jewish culture, there is no one that is more revered than the man Moses. Moses is seen as the, uh, as the, the pinnacle of the nation of Israel's uh, covenant with God. He is seen as a deliverer. He's like a, a type of Christ. He leads them uh, out of slavery through the wilderness and on the brink of entering into the promised land. Uh, and so uh, Moses is an interesting character and so there are some things that I want us to be able to see about Moses. And, and the reason why I'm, I'm spending so much time in the Old Testament is because uh, it is true 
that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Now the whole Bible is about Jesus and you can find Jesus and shadows of Jesus as you study, study the life of Moses and you can also see how, how uh, God's covenant that he made in the Old Testament uh, will help us to appreciate the covenant that he ma he's made with you and I today. So let's, let's see some things that we can learn about Noah. And so when you uh, study uh, Exodus, chapter, uh, Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 through 10, uh, these are some things you can learn about um, Moses. First of all, he was born in Egypt. He was born to parents who were of the tribe of Levi. He was born under an edict uh, of Pharaoh of Egypt, which was to kill all males born of, born of the slaves. Uh, he was shielded by his parents for three months. And then they finally sent him up the river uh, and was discovered by Pharaoh's daughter, uh, Moses' sister, uh, Miriam, had followed the, uh, the basket and uh, had a conversation with, with Pharaoh's daughter and said, you want somebody to watch the baby? And, and actually, Moses' own mother raised him and got paid. She's the only mother I know that got paid to raise her own kids. And so, uh, and so uh, he was found by Pharaoh's daughter, raised by his birth mother. He was raised up in the house of Pharaoh in the ways of the Egyptians. He killed a man at the age of 40, thinking that that was how God was going to deliver Israel from slavery. Uh, once the Pharaoh had discovered uh, that it was out that Moses killed a man, Moses fled to Midian where he lived as a shepherd for 40 years. He married an Ethiopian woman. Uh, he was the father of two sons. He encountered God at the age of 80. So the first 40 years he was raised up in the Egyptian ways. After he killed the man, he fled to Midian where he stayed for 40 years. By the time he encounters God at the burning bush, he's now 80 years old. And God tells him to return back to the place he left. He fled. And he was going to be the instrument by which God would deliver the children of Israel from slavery. And for 40 years, he led the children of Israel through the wilderness and just on the other side of the river Jordan, God had told him he would not allow him to go over. Uh, no, uh, uh, Moses died, but when he died, he was healthy. His eyesight had not withered. Uh, and uh, no one knows where his body was buried. He had a close relationship with God. He's known as the lawgiver. And he wrote the first five books of the, of, of the Torah, of the Bible. So you want to know how, you want to know uh, why we know about creation? Because God told, no, uh, told Moses what to write. And Moses was able to, to let us know in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so let's look at the covenant that God uh, made with Moses. Uh, and the children of Israel. So go with me to Genesis, Exodus. For some reason, I've been in Genesis several times with, with Abraham and, and with Noah, but now I'm in, I'm in Exodus. So let's look at Exodus chapter 19. God delivered the Israelites by, by bringing plagues upon, upon Egypt. There were 10 plagues. The last plague was was the deaf angel passed by where the firstborn of, of Egypt died and only those who were, who were covered by the blood did the deaf angel pass over. And so now they are, they are delivered from Egypt. Let's look at verse 19. Verse 19 tells us, I'm sorry, chapter 19, verse 1. On the third new moon, that's the third month, 
after the people of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain. While Moses went up to God, the Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the children of the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagle's wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice, and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all nations or people. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you shall speak to the people of Israel. So, the children of Israel have now escaped Egypt. They're at the Mount Sinai, and it's also referred to as Mount Horeb and other pastor scripture, but they're at the Mount Sinai, and God calls Moses up to the mountain. Moses. And God instructs Moses to Listen. remind the children of Israel or children of Jacob how he had delivered them. You, do you know that there are some things that should not escape your, your uh, remembrance? When you yourself, by the, by the experience that you've had in your life, you've seen God bring deliverance. Have you ever had a situation where you know it was nobody but God? And when you have a nobody but God experience, you don't have to have anybody else tell you. Why? Because you've seen it for yourself and you know that it was God. So what God is saying, I want you to remind Israel, the children of Israel, who have been in captivity for well over 400 years. I want you to remind them of what they saw with their own eyes. He says, now, and, and I want you to tell them that if they will obey my voice, that I will make a covenant with them and they will become a treasured possession, special on the earth. They would be a, a, a nation, of, a holy nation, a kingdom of priests. And so, so God said, go back and tell them what I told you. So we see that in verse 7. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and said before them all the words that the Lord had commanded. And the people, this is the people said, oh, yeah, Lord, we're going to do exactly what you say. We're going to, is it, oh, obeying you is going to be easy. Everything you tell us, Lord, we're going to do. You ever seen people say that? Yeah, I can do that, Lord. So God says that if you obey my voice, you'll be a special people to me. Now, Moses, go back and tell them what I said. And they say, so he called the elders. And the elders said, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. They all agree. Yes, that's a good, that's a good covenant. So look at verse number 7 and uh, 8. And it says, and all the people answered together. They were all in agreement. And said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And then Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. So Moses is kind of a, 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 a mediator. He goes, he hears what God says. God says, go tell them what I said. He tell the people what God said. They say, we can do it. Moses goes back and said, Lord, they said they can do it. So now they're in covenant. So God says, now, I want to seal the deal. And so do you know what God does? God tells Moses to, now in three days, I'm a, uh, I want you to bring them to the mountain. And I'm going to speak to them and they're going to hear my voice. And they're going to know that I'm the one that have spoken. So when you read uh, Exodus chapter 19, that story will come out. But let's go down to verse uh, number 16. On the morning of the third day, there was thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people in the camp 
tremble. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended on it in fire. The smoke of it was like the smoke of a kiln, and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him in thunder. Moses. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai. So that's the, the presence of God is at the top of the mountain, and the people are at the bottom of the mountain. They see the smoke. They hear the thunder. They hear the sound of the trumpet that's getting louder and louder. And verse 21 says, And the Lord said to Moses, Now go down and warn the people, lest they break through to the Lord to look, and many of them perish. So in other words, God set some limits. They couldn't go past the limits that God had set. So when they're gathering around the, uh, at the foot of the mountain, we get to chapter 20. And, and, and in chapter 20, God, these are the words spoken by God to them. So here's what God says. Can you imagine that day they hear a voice? They're at the foot of the mountain. God's at the top of the mountain. And God speaks so loud that everybody can hear what, what does say the Lord. And hear what God says. Verse number two. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. In other words, he's letting them know, hey, I'm, I'm, I, I am Jehovah. I am Elohim. I am, Ed, I am uh, Adonai. I am, I am El Shaddai. I am the almighty God. He said, I'm the one who delivered you. He looks at verse 3. Now, he's making a covenant with him right now. You said you're going to obey me. Here's what I want you to do. You shall have no other gods before me. That's the first commandment. He says here in verse 4, You shall not make for yourselves a carven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. Why not? For I, am I the Lord your God, I am a jealous God. I visit the iniquities of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. In other words, those who disobey God, it not only affects them, it, it affects those who come behind them. Do, do you know that some of the things that you have gone through is a direct result of, uh, of your parents and grandparents and great-grandparents. Why? Because God visits the iniquity down to the third and the fourth generation. So God says to them, but he also said, but I show steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Another thing that you can discover is that some of you have been blessed, as I have been blessed. Why? Because of the decisions that have been made by my parents, my grandparents, my great-grandparents. So verse 7, God gives another commandment. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord would not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. You ever heard people uh, just use, just toss God's name around lightly or you ever seen people who curse and, and, and they will they will use a profanity and they'll attach God's name to it? You ever seen people make jokes about God? That's taking God's name in vain. The Bible says that is sin. So it's a sin to have uh, uh, other gods before him. It's a sin to make images of, of things in heaven or, or things under the earth. It's a, it's a sin to take God's name in vain. Then he tells us in verse number eight, now remember the Sabbath day to do what? Keep it holy. And the Sabbath day, for the, which, which was the day of rest, if you know God rested on the seventh day, so they were told to, to, to rest on the Sabbath day, to keep it a holy day. And God reminds them, for six days you shall labor 
and do all your work, but on the seventh day, it's a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your sons or your daughters, your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sonner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord uh, made the heavens and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath and made it whole. Do you know uh, the Jewish uh uh, the Jewish people, this covenant, they keep even to the day. From Friday evening to Saturday evening, that's the Sabbath. They, they don't do anything. Uh, they don't travel far. They don't answer the phone. They don't ride the elevators up. There are no flights in and out of Israel on the Sabbath day. Why? Because they're trying to obey the commandments to keep it holy. Anybody remember as a kid growing up, uh, the one thing you knew uh, uh, number one, you couldn't go shopping on Sunday. Why is that? Because all the stores were still honoring the idea that that was a day not to work. But then all of a sudden there was a, there was a greediness for the dollar bill and all of a sudden the stores opened. Anybody remember where, uh, I remember as a kid, we play, we play sports uh, Monday through Saturday, but on Sunday, we couldn't go out and just play like we used to. Why? Because it was it was it was church day. Now now people people are going taking their kids to summer camp or, or AAU basketball. Why? Because they don't have a reverence for that day of rest. Uh, and so uh, you think about it. So that was the that was uh, one of the commandments. Let's look at another commandment: Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. So God is saying to those uh, who, are, who are children, obey your parents, honor your parents. But he's even saying to those who, uh, uh, who are grown, whose parents may be living, honor your parents. One of the ways you honor your parents is to, is to look after them, take care of them, call them. Anybody who has a parent that's still alive, that's a blessing. What do you do? Call them. Let them know that you're there for them, you're thinking about them. That's how you honor your parents, okay? He also says here, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not buy a false witness against your neighbor. In other words, that means lying. You shall not cover your neighbor's house nor shall you cover your neighbor's wife or, or his male servant or his female servant. In other words, you shouldn't be wanting something that belongs to somebody else simply because you want it and, and they have it and you don't. Now, those, are the, those ten commandments are the bedrock of Western civilization. There used to be a time where the ten commandments were spoken in the public schools. Because of court rulings, they were taken out. Now, I don't, I, uh, I don't know if there's a correlation. I suspect there is. But as soon as the word of God was taken out of the public schools, somehow, some way, schools got worse. Schools got worse. When you take the consciousness of God out of the mind of people, things get worse. When you read Romans chapter 1, the Bible says that because they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. There's something about uh, not keeping the commandments of God at your forefront. And so the Ten Commandments, this is it. This is the covenant that God made with them. God's covenant was pretty simple. You do these things. You obey me. This is what, this is what God was saying. You do these things and you shall live. You shall prosper. You shall, you shall uh, uh, um, become a priest, a holy nation. Now, I, the, question, the question on the table is, have you kept God's commandments? Come on now. Is there any of those commandments? that you have, you've kept, you've never stolen, you've never lied, you've never 
committed murder. You never committed adultery. Even Jimmy Carter said when he was president, I've committed adultery in my heart. Why did he say that? Because the Bible, because Jesus said, if you look on a woman to lust, you've already committed the sin. So the truth of the matter is when God established these commandments, he said, now if you break one of them, you've broken the covenant. But they did say to God, they are going to do what? Do everything that God says. Isn't that true? Is that not what they said in, in Exodus chapter 19? So let's, let's look a little bit more and let's see how God sealed this covenant. Go with me to Exodus chapter 24. Minister White, this is very interesting. How God uh, sealed the covenant. They made an agreement, so how do you seal it? Well, how does a man and a woman seal a covenant when they get married? They give them a ring. They, they, they make vows. They pledge their commitment to one another. But let's look at, uh, at how God sealed the covenant with, with Moses and the children of Israel. Let's look at verse number um, five. Verse number five says, And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord, and Moses took half of the blood, he took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw on the altar. So half the blood was thrown on the altar, and half the blood, let's see, let's look at the other half, it was put in basins. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, all that the Lord has spoken. Here, here's the second time they said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people. And behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all the words. So they made a blood covenant. Now I told you earlier that uh, covenants could be sealed by, by, by cutting your palms and the two parties would share blood or they would cut the wrists and they would mix their hands together and share blood. And so in this instance, God's making a covenant with them. And so half the, half the blood of the shed was put on the altar and the other half was thrown on the people. And they said, we will do all that the Lord has said to do. Now, most people think there are only Ten Commandments. But when you read all of uh, Exodus and you read uh, Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, it has, it has been noted that, that there were over 600 plus commandments to do. And if you only broke one of them, you were a law breaker. And so I want you to know that we're moving from the covenant that God made with Abraham and through his seed all nations will be blessed, the covenant with Noah that, uh, that all the offspring of Noah, that he would never destroy the world again by flood, and that every time you see a rainbow, that's a sign of the covenant that I made uh, never again, never again, and now we enter into the covenant with Moses and the children of Israel and, and how you're going to be a special people to God if you obey and keep his commandments. But it's not just the ten. The ten are the basis. Everything else uh, comes from those ten. But, but the commandments to keep were, were numerous, well into the hundreds. But they had made a commitment to God that they would keep the covenant. And so I want to share with you, number one, God is a covenant God. When we study the history of Israel, we will discover that it didn't take long, Minister White, Minister Sutton, it did not take long for them to uh, break the commandments. As a matter of fact, God had written the commandments on, 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 on tablets of stone. And while Moses had spent some time up with God, 
God told Moses, Moses, you need to get down because those people are throwing a party and it ain't a Holy Ghost party. They're, they're throwing a party where they are worshiping idol God. They've already built, they had Aaron build a calf, a golden calf. And Moses see, see the idolatry and he takes, he takes, the, 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 he takes the, uh, the, the commandments and boom, throw them down. He has to go and get another set of commandments. So it didn't take long. And have you ever seen people who make a vow to God? It doesn't take long for them to break the commitment that they made to God. And I know we've all sinned. We've all fallen short. We've all strayed. We've all missed the mark. But in our day and time, the challenge is return to God. Make that commitment. Renew that commitment. The thing I like about studying the Bible is that the Bible does not hide the the sins of even the people that are in the hall of faith. Abraham lied, said Sarah was his sister. He did that on several occasions. Moses killed the man. Noah, after having spent a year in the boat, in the ark, he became a farmer and he grew, he grew some grapes, made some wine and got drunk. You'll, you'll discover that, that the heroes of the Bible, they were not perfect. But they were men and women of faith. And so our challenge today is to grow in our faith, to renew our faith, to, to gain a better understanding of what, what God's word is and what God's will is, and commit our way of life. That is the challenge. And so you'll discover that in all of this, God was is saying to, to Israel, now you made a promise. So I want you uh, right now, go with me to Acts chapter 7, because I want you to see what uh, Stephen had to say about, about Moses and the children of Israel right before he was stoned to death. Every child of Israel knew the story. And so in, in Acts chapter 7, beginning with verse 20, and, and Stephen, when he was, when he was uh, uh, preaching, he went all the way back to Abraham. But let's look at what he says at, in, in chapter tw uh, verse 20 about Moses. At this time Moses was born, he was beautiful in God's sight. He was brought up for three months in his father's house. And when he was exposed, Pharaoh's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in his words and deeds. When he was 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brothers, the children of Israel, and seeing one of them being wrong, he defended the oppressed man and avenged him by striking down the Egyptian. He supposed that his brothers would understand that God was giving them salvation by his hand, but they did not understand. And on the following day, he appeared to them as they were quarreling and tried to reconcile them, saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you wrong one another? But the man who was wronging his neighbor thrust him aside and said, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed that Egyptian yesterday? So in other words, Moses you killed this man, and you think nobody knows about it because you look to the left and you look to the right, but there was somebody who knew. So when Moses heard that, the Bible says, and at this time retort, Moses fled and became an exile in the land of Midian where he became the father of two sons. And now, verse, and now when 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight. And as he drew near to look, there came the voice of the Lord. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham and Isaac of Jacob. And Moses trembled and did not dare to look. 
Then the Lord said to him, Take off the sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing on is holy ground. He says, Surely I have seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their grounding, and I have come down to deliver them, and now come, I will send you to Egypt. And so when you read the story of Moses uh, in, in Exodus and you read uh, Stephen's recollection of what Moses did, you will see that Moses was obedient to God. And so at the age of 80, most of us would have been, re uh, been retired somewhere off a beach or uh, uh, in a condo. Moses was sent to do God's bidding. And so never, 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 ever assume that God won't, won't call you at a later stage of life to carry out an assignment. Moses thought he was going to do it this way, and God said, no, that's not how you're going to do it. You're going to do it, Moses. You're right. You're going to be the one who will help deliver them, but you're going to do it my way. And so I want to just thank you for sharing with us um, time in the Word of God. And again, I want to thank you for understanding that the covenant that God makes with you, the covenant that he makes with me, it, it's a covenant that he will keep his end of the bargain. And our challenge is to keep our end of the covenant. So thank you, Ben Washington and, and guests. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you real soon. Have a great evening. Thank you for listening to the BWBC Online Bible Study Lesson. We pray that you have been blessed.